continuing on problem nine, sorry, problem 10. There aren't really absolute rules for which test to use, but the ratio test works well with powers and with factorials because those cancel well. So when you see both of them in the same place, it's crying out to at least try this. But the limit as n goes to infinity, n factorial over n plus one factorial times three to the n plus one over three to the n. What we need, well, actually we don't, re we need to not get one and we need for the limit to exist. Um, so n factorial over n plus one factorial, is one over n plus one times three. This limit is zero. And interpreting the ratio test, anything that's less than one means absolute convergence. Problem 11. There might be multiple ways of doing this, but what's crying out to me is that this is less than this. If you have a large number here in the denominator, it causes the fraction to be small. And one over three to the n is one third to the power of n. This converges. It's a geometric series. One third is less than one. So the smaller series. also converges. For number 12, um, this negative one to the n is going to make the series alternate. If we start, where are we starting? We're starting at one. This will give us a negative sign. Two, negative one squared, this will be positive. 3, negative 1 cubed, this will be negative, and so on. So this is an alternating series. And I guess there are a few things we could try. The ratio test and the root test don't, uh, don't need stuff to be positive. But I mean, alternating series is kind of crying out for the alternating series test. This limit does equal zero. That's the first condition of the alternating series test. You can use L'Hopital's rule to see this. The second condition is less trivial to show. 
these terms need to be, it's the opposite of what I wanted to write. These terms need to be decreasing. So the second term needs to be smaller than the first term. The third term needs to be smaller than the second term and so on. And the way that I'm going to do this is that I'll show that this function is always decreasing. So f of one will be bigger than f of two, will be bigger than f of three, will be bigger than f of four. And f of one is a sub one, f of two is a sub two, f of three is a sub three, and so on. So this is a calculus one exercise. For a function to be decreasing, its derivative needs to be a negative. And is this negative? Yeah. Um, when n is one, this numerator is negative. And then as n increases, this just gets smaller and smaller. So it starts negative and it stays negative. A negative number divided by a positive number. This is positive because it's a square. This derivative is negative. So this is decreasing. So these terms are decreasing.